Well, that's the national anthem done with. And shortly to get underway, the vacant European heavyweight championship. This title given up, in fact, by Lennox Lewis. Back in one heap, managed by Mickey Duff. And Axel Schultz by Wilfred Sowell and our joint promoter. So this, in fact, a three-way promotion. Jean-Christophe Courage, the Frenchman. Wilfred Sowell and Mickey Duff. And Akiwandi being exceptionally well paid for this contest. And Schultz, you couldn't get two more different men fighting for this title. Schultz likes to rumble forward, he is strong. And Akin Wandy likes to flick his punches out at long range. So I can't remember the last time that two unbeaten heavyweights fought for this title. Round one then. And in all weights, there's been 23 meetings between Britons and Germans for European titles. And Britain have won 13, they've lost seven and drawn two. So that means that Germany's lost 13. So at least we're on the right side. Axel Schultz, the German heavyweight champion in the white trunks. And Aki Wani, of course, having a bit of a problem getting some uh, credibility in England. He's got the likes of Frank Bruno, Herbie Hyde, and Lennox Lewis around him. Lennox Lewis, of course, now the WBC heavyweight champion, handed that uh, title by default. And the last man to get it by default was, in fact, Ken Norton, you might remember, back in 78. And he failed to retain it when he fought Larry Holmes the first time as WBC champion. And let's hope Lennox can do one better than that. So, Henry Akinwanda then, from Lewisham in South London, in the blue trunks. And he's got a good uppercut, Henry. And if he wanted to use that against his shorter, Axel Schultz, as Axel bores himself in. They've sparred with each other quite a bit in the past. In one, they're using that long spearing jab in this first round. He won't want to get involved in a punch up with Schultz. Schultz is a strong man oh, and nice and quick as well. And Akinwandi can be a bit of a crab on occasion, he knows how to hang on former two-time super heavyweight champion as an amateur. Schultz, a former European junior champion, and came runner-up as a senior in the European Championships. Also beaten the semi-finals in the World Championships. And of course, a former German amateur champion representing the East, as it was then. And this contest could prove to be hard to score. So what do you take? Akin Wandy's long but light punches, or those rushing attacks of Axel Schultz? I personally, of course, always go for the man who lands both punches, and for my money, that was Akin Wandy. So he's got 10 points. Schultz has got nine. It's the four-point system, the one-point system in European title fights with two judges and a scoring referee. The referee Daniel van der Veel, the Belgian. And Raymond Bachelet, the French judge, along with Paolo Scarzo from Italy. And do yourselves a favour, score this one at home. Give the winner of each round ten points, a loser a proportionate amount less and if you think that the round is level, give them ten each. 
Normally, of course, the loser of the round would get nine points, so try and work it out for yourselves. This is sure to be one of those testing scorecards. Round two, then, of a scheduled 12 for the vacant European Heavyweight Championship. And, of course, Schultz knows full well he can't afford to stand back and allow Akin Wandi to pick him up like this. They have got a couple of uh, common opponents. as they both box Ramon Vaughan from Holland and Steve Garber from England. In fact, Akin won his last fight was against Steve Garber. Our mate from Bradford, he beat Steve in two in Manchester. Schultz beat Ramon Vaughan in five rounds. Henry Akinwanda outpointed Vaughan over eight. And that gives you some idea of what we've got here. And Akinwanda wants to use his feet and every inch of this ring because Schultz is going to be in an explosive mood here. He's going to try and use his punches to good effect, but only when it suits him. Naturally, of course, trying to catch Henry on the chin. And Akin Wandi's a pretty decent puncher when he gets the timing right. But he does tend to pitter-patter on occasion. And the problem with Axel Schultz being a puncher rather than a worker is that he needs to set himself before he throws them and Akin Wani, of course, can see that coming. Stab out a left hand and move his feet. And leave Schultz to set himself again. Bit of shoulder there from Akin Wanda, the Londoner. And this Berlin ice rink crammed with 2,300 paying spectators. As the bell ends the second, and once again, I think Akin Wanda's taken it. Same tactics as in round one. I'll give you some idea of the Britons that have held this title way back in the 60s. Dick Richardson was the European heavyweight champion, followed by John McCormack. Henry Cooper had it in 68. Joe Bugner in 71. Chris Finnegan in 72 was a light heavyweight champion. Richard Dunn was the heavyweight champion in 76. Henry beat Bern August in three rounds. I saw that fight. I was in Germany at the time. And a couple of cruiserweights that have won it. Sammy Reeson and Johnny Nelson. Round three then of a scheduled 12 and this vacant European heavyweight title given up by Lennox Lewis in fact Lewis was forced to give up the championship because the uh, EBU in their wisdom scheduled him to meet this man Henry Akinwandi Akinwandi was the leading contender for the European championship and of course the same night Lennox Lewis was boxing himself against Razor Ruddock. Consequently, this title became vacant. Nice punches coming in from Akinwanda. They're nice and fast. Always was a pretty quick puncher. I have a feeling that Schultz's better rounds may be the later rounds. Akinwanda's got a... He seems to have a habit 
of losing concentration. But it's going to be hard for Henry to get the nod in Germany in a close fight anyway, as you'd expect if this one was in London. his punches go but uh, Henry Akinwanda is just dipping his head and slipping those shoulders and the punches are missing and he had a great fight you might have actually remember seeing it Axel Schultz I'm talking about and he beat uh, Bernd Friedrich on points over 10 rounds for the vacant German heavyweight title that was in Kassel in Germany cheering everything that uh, Schultz does and Henry Akinwan has never boxed beyond eight rounds in his professional career Schultz has earned Akin Wanda's respect in that round. There's not too much in it, possibly a level round. So in that case, you're given 10 points apiece. But I've still got Henry Akin Wanda a couple of points in front with three rounds gone. And there's nine more to go. Is she wearing? That's a nice leading left hook from Henry Akinwanda. So we've got three rounds completed. Round four coming up after this break. Stay with us. This vacant European heavyweight championship. Henry Akinwandi from London. In action against Axel Schultz, the German. Schultz comes from Bad Saddle in the East originally. Only 24 years of age, Axel Schultz, and which is nothing for a heavyweight, of course. They don't normally mature until their late 20s. And uh, Akin won now 27. So he's uh, approaching his peak years physically. He's always been a long string bean of a fighter. The tallest heavyweight in Europe at 6 feet 7. actually beat Herbie Hyde as an amateur and a match between the two was mooted about a year ago or within the last year I should say but uh, hasn't come to fruition pity really wouldn't mind seeing that one but the fight's been talked up sufficiently for it to be uh, attractive for people to pay to watch it You've just got to wonder to what extent And you couldn't get a greater contrast in two fighters. Schultz, of course, will just have to keep bundling forward, trying to take away the legs of Akimoni, keep him moving, get him tired for the later rounds where he might just be susceptible to a big punch. Well, a couple of good rights there from Schultz. And when you find that uh, 
But when Akin Wandy finds himself under pressure, he throws out pity pat punches. He stops standing his ground. Akin Wandy then switches to southpaw for a second. As once again, Schultz tries to push him back. Nice body shots from Akin Wanda. Oh, and a good right from Schultz. That's what he's looking for. Of course, this squealing crowd will react to everything that Axel does, which in turn might just reflect on the judges. You never know. Well, there wasn't too much in that one either. So a 10-10 round. So with four rounds gone, I've got Akin Wandi with 40 points and Schultz with 38. And take no notice of my scores, but uh, I'm just trying to encourage you to do it yourselves. A lot of people do make a mental note. But if you're really serious about learning to score, do it on paper. Akin Wadi does tend to slap on occasion. So, round five, scheduled for 12. Henry Akin Wanda in the blue from London against the German Axel Schultz. And surprisingly, Schultz being an East German has got a pretty attractive style against the right opponent. Akin Wanda that would make Mike Tyson look clumsy. Nice left-hand work from Henry Akinwanda. And again, that snappy jab, double left hook also. Wait for Schultz to try and bore in when he gets the chance. That's it, right hand, left hook from Schultz. And there's a lot of rivalry here between uh, both camps. They are, in fact, promotional partners, Mickey Duff and Wilfred Sauerland. And yet, the respective managers of both these protagonists. Strangely enough, uh, Akin Wanda seems to allow himself to be a bit intimidated on occasion. I'm sure we've not seen the best of Henry yet. And there's not a great deal of money to be made as European heavyweight champion these days, principally because there's just no heavyweights left in Europe. Well, Schultz there once again tries his rushing tactics, but he's not landing. That's a good round for Henry. 
So he gets 10 points and Axel gets 9. So with uh, 5 rounds gone, 50 points to 47. That's only on my card, remember. And this is a giant step up in class for Axel Schultz. Schultz a pro now for, in fact, since May of 1990. Beat my old mate Barry Ellis on points over six in his third fight. Stop Steve, Steve Garber in five in his six. Also, one of the few men to actually stop Steve G from Birmingham. Last Britisher that um, Schultz boxed was Gary McCrory, beaten in two. McCrory, of course, brother of Glenn, the former IBF champion. This is round six. And last time out, which might be significant, Axel Schultz took eight rounds to outpoint Ricky Parkey, the former cruiserweight champion for the IBF. That was in October. Now, Ricky Parkey generally fall up, falls over at the uh, slightest invitation. So that's a bit worrying about the power of Axel Schultz, because Parkey was there to be hit. And four fights ago, Henry Akinwanda boxed the ill-fated Michael Richards, the former Midlands area heavyweight champion who collapsed and sadly died at home, only 25 years of age. What a terrible shame. Also, rather surprisingly, I spoke to Johnny Fury about this. He beat Gypsy Johnny Fury on a third round knockout, and Johnny said he'd never been hit so hard. And I think it's the timing and, and actual speed of Akinwandi's punches that make the difference. It's not it's not body weight for sure, because he's not a heavy heavyweight. Nice jabbing from Henry Akinwanda. Well, Schultz once again trying to rush forward with his strength. Walks on to punches though. Well, it looks to be the start of a swelling on the right eye of Axel Schultz. Nothing serious at this point. And you'd think that if uh, Schultz could catch Johnny Nelson, he wouldn't have too many problems catching Akin Wonder. Well, there's two rights over the top there from Schultz and a stiff jab. But it's Akin Wonder who's throwing the majority of punches. Well, it wasn't a bad round for Axel Schultz, but he didn't win it. So, I'm going to give it to Henry Akin Wonder. I've now got Schultz four points adrift with six rounds gone. Got a replay here from the sixth. And we're going to take a short break before the second half of this contest of this vacant European heavyweight title fight. Henry Akinwanda, 60 points on my card. Axel Schultz, 56. And just to reiterate on the records, Akinwanda unbeaten in 18. 13 wins inside the distance. And Axel Schultz unbeaten in 15, with eight beaten inside the limit. And Axel Schultz having trouble here pinning 
Akinwanda down long enough to do any damage. Akinwanda just poking out these long arms of his to pepper Schultz. Double jab though from Axel. So I, say, I think the last half of this fight might just suit Schultz more. over the top from Schultz. And Akinwan out of range with that jab, but the right got through. Akinwan not too keen here on committing himself in case he walks into one. This European Championship is a route to the world's top ten. And, of course, a very important match. So important, in fact, Harry Mullen, editor of Boxing News, is here ringside. And some good work now coming from Schultz. Schultz has been told to try and keep Akinwanda under a bit more pressure in this round. Well, that's the way. And it's rounds like this the judges will give to Schultz. Actually going to give that round to Axel Schultz as well. The first one that I think Eckenwand has lost. But Eckenwand is still a three point lead with seven rounds gone on my card, five to go. And he's trained by Brian. I hate, I hate to say I forgot his surname. Brian was, of course, associated so long with James Cook. Akinwanda managed by Mickey Duff. And in the corner of Axel Schultz is George Francis. And there's a measure of how hard it is for Schultz to actually get those fists on the head of the Londoner. Into round eight then. Henry Akinwanda in the blue against Axel Schultz. Again, Schultz charges forward, but the punches don't connect.
Well, Akin Wonder still manages to pick off Schultz as he charges forward. But that time, Schultz did connect. Didn't make too much of a difference, though. Don't forget, Akin Wonder, six feet seven inches tall. A good four inches taller than the German. nice the left hook to the body sounded like a slap though don't forget the uh, referee and two judges will score this one and once again Schultz throwing punches but they're not really getting through Can Henry Akinwanda keep up this pace? He's never boxed beyond eight rounds in his life, remember? So, at the end of this one, he'll only equal that achievement. Now, Schultz getting through. But it's one of the few flurries he's got through with in this round. And Schultz back on top at the finish. So with uh, eight rounds gone, 79, 75 on my card. See what I mean about Schultz charging forward and those punches whizzing over the head of Akin Wanda. One out of three or four getting through, but it's not enough. Good picture. So into round nine then, four to go. And I've got Schultz needing all of these for a draw. Four rounds behind, coming into the ninth. And Henry Akinwan has never boxed beyond eight rounds previously. Nice right from Schultz. That's the way to start the round. Of course, Schultz has uh, boxed ten hard rounds just two fights ago when he won the German heavyweight championship. Schultz catching these punches on his gloves now. But uh, Akinwanda, he's just flicking them out, waiting for something more meaningful. Good right again from Schultz. And again. Well, now he's making them tell. And Akinwanda's been forced to use this big ring in its entirety and that's going to wear down his legs Well, the referee, they're just warning Akin Wanda to keep his punches up. That looked just about borderline. And it's significant that Akin Wanda hasn't really landed with any... With, with many scoring blows so far in this ninth round. Schultz has. And Akin Wande wants to make sure he doesn't run out of steam here. Schultz cheered on by this uh, German crowd. He's going to be fighting for every second of this round. 
or this fight. And Schultz's eyebrows are slightly swollen now. And it can have a psychological effect, an adverse effect on the fighter. The fight into a round he's never been to before. Of course, Akimani will have done it in sparring. Well, a good round, I think, for Axel Schultz. Well, 88-85 in favour of Akinwanda so far on my card. And as I say, I think Schultz will have his best moments late in this contest. And we're getting rather late now. There's three rounds to go. of Axel Schultz, done a good job with him so far and it's 25 years since the Germans last had a European heavyweight champion and that was uh, Karl Mildenberger, he beat in London Billy Walker in eight rounds way back in uh, the 21st of March 1967 and the Germans desperately want success here round 10 of a 12 And I've got Schultz needing this last three for a draw. 88 to 85 on my card in favour of Akinwanda. And Schultz needs to keep up this uh, strong advance. He can't afford to stand back and be picked off by these long punches from Akinwanda. Wanda throwing out what they call arm punches. There's no body behind them. But there is somebody in front of them. Nice left hook. Schultz still trying to go forward, firing punches, but once again, Akinwanda foils him, manages to slip them. But of course, it looks good for the crowd. You can see that uh, that right eyebrow of Schultz's is getting rather big and ugly. Once again, Schultz throws punches, but they fail to find the target. And Akinwandi knows how to foil a big puncher. Well, the pace has been good. Well, I think uh, Henry's got that one. Once again, I've got Akinwandi, four points in front. There's two rounds to go, the 11th, the penultimate round coming up. And 
and you've got to wonder where the judges will go. Don't forget the referee scores. He's Belgian. Daniel Van der Veel. The French judge, Raymond Bachelet. And the Italian, Paolo Scarzo. Round 11, then. Here we go. Big effort required now from Axel Schultz in this last couple of rounds. Of course, take no note of my scorecard. Only my opinion. Well, that's better from Schultz this time. Those punches just grazing the chin of Akinwandik. Manager Mickey Duff there, just told to be quiet, get off the ring apron. Oh, and a left hook from Schultz. And Akin one has got this terribly annoying habit of throwing a left hand, knowing it's not going to land, but one thing it does do is it keeps your opponent busy, makes him think about it, Also gives your opponent a chance to pop her right over the top, which can be dangerous. And Akin Wandi on occasion also shows a highly perceptive survival mode. He knows how to look after himself. Well, Schultz going forward, clubbing right hand, followed by a left hook. And looks like he's got padding for eyebrows now. Oh, look at that. Top view of Schultz's eyebrow. That's quite a nasty swelling. And it's a testament to the thumping left hands that Akinwan has been setting into his face all night. Well, Schultz, the aggressor, in this 11th round, needs to keep it on, though. Well, if you're going to go for aggression, you've got to give that round to Schultz. But there wasn't much in it. So I'm going to go evens on that one. So at this point, Axel Schultz on my card has got 104 points, and Henry Akinwanda has got 108. That's a four-point difference, and uh, there's no way that Schultz can win this one on points, I'm sure. Twelfth and last round, then. The last three minutes to decide this. The customary touch of gloves prior to the last bell. And Henry Akamanda needs this round as big as he's ever needed anything in his life. A couple of knockdowns wouldn't go amiss either. That would tighten it up. And I grant you that Akinwanda's punches may not always have been as heavy as they could have been. But the problem is Schultz has been missing. 
when he's been storming forward, letting both hands pump away. And it's, I think it's fair to say that Akin Wonder is not brilliant, but he's so hard to beat. Good left hand, though, from Schultz. Whoops, and uh, cute footwork for Mackinwandy. Well, it looks like Axel Schultz's uh, desire to become the first European heavyweight champion for 25 years is going to be thwarted here by Henry Akinwanda. And once again, Akinwanda manages to dodge those punches and get through with a flurry of uh, body punches while well, he walked onto a right there well we're in the last minute of the last round And there's no way that Schultz has done enough. It might just have come a bit too soon for him. His uh, 16th professional fight. Well, there's the bell. It's all over. And Schultz didn't win that round either. Well, I've got that 118 to 113 in favour of Henry Akinwanda from South London. Seven rounds to two on my card with three even. In favour of Henry Akinwanda. 118 to 113 on my card. Got to wait for the judges now. Lovely uppercut. Well, looks like Schultz thinks he's won this. That will be a travesty, I think, if he gets this. It was a good effort, but... Uh, I'm sure he hasn't won. This, of course, very nerve-wracking for both camps. Here we go. Well, that's interesting. Well, he's given it a draw. The referee has made it 1-1-5 one, one, apiece. That's five rounds each and two even. And the Italians also gone 1-1-5 one, one, each. And the French was gone 1-18-1-15 one, one, in favour of Akinwanda. So it's a majority draw. There's confirmation. Paolo 
Well, once again, you heard it, 115, 115. Yes, one one eight to one one five for Akinwandi by the French judge. Well, I think Henry Akinwanda considered himself very unfortunate there, but that was always on the cards. Boxing in Germany, as it would have been, of course, for Schultz boxing in London. That's life, that's boxing, that's sport these days. But uh, the whistles and boos ringing out round this crowd.